We know that the German people okay. appreciate uh, this in general. Yes, it's the most important. <laughs> Uh, magic, <laughs> and as you can see, the interest in the topic is very high. So, where can we start the presentation? Okay, thank you. Uh, so, if you want to uh, record my voice or take a video for me, is not a problem. Okay. So, welcome. Your voice is I'm very, uh, very proud to be here, and thank you to the Civic team for allowing me to present my presentation. The presentation is divided in two parts. The first part is uh, theoretical, and then uh, we will try to make some practice in uh, fixing size. We need uh, six filters to do this kind of, uh, of composition, because I use uh, H-alpha, H-beta, and O3 images, and uh, Narrow, uh, broadband images, so RGB. You don't need it. Uh, uh, you don't need the uh, luminance because with narrowband emission nebulas, luminance is not useful. <coughs> so, what uh, from where comes the light from celestial bodies? We have two mechanisms of, of emission the continuous emission from black body emission, mainly, and the line emission from ionized gas recombination. The black body emission is typical of stars, so we have a, an emission continuous with a typical curve that is the black body radiation. The peak of the radiation depends only on the temperature and also the shape of the, of the curve depends on the temperature, but it's a more or less continuous inside all the visible range of light. <coughs> this is the typical emission of stars, and as I said, is a, continu a continuous emission at all the wavelengths. Typical example is the spectra of the sun, we have uh, uh, absorption lines uh, superimposed, but the main distribution has the typical shape of the black body uh, emission. By contrast, the nebulas emit lights by uh, ionization of the atoms that compose the nebula. Very simple model. We have a proton, hydrogen atom. Hydrogen makes 75% uh, of all the gas in the, in the space. So <coughs> we have a very simple uh, model. We have a photon, we have an electron. There, the electron is hit She's by a, high energy light. Yeah. <laughs> and then is kicked away or it's, it's on a higher concept. shell. When the electron goes back to the base shell, it emits lights. It's a very narrow band light with the exact wavelength. So it is not continuous. It is always at the same wavelength because it depends on the different level of the two shells. The, uh, the gas in the sky, in the, in the space, has a very low density. So we can consider the atom as uh, alone in the sky. So it is not influenced by nearby atoms. <clears throat> the reality is a little bit more complex. For example, for the hydrogen atom, we have many different shells. So for each shell, we have a different series of lines. In the visual range that we are interested in, we have the Balmer, the Balmer series, that, uh, uh, in which the electron falls down to the second shell, energy shell, of the hydrogen. So we have a typical emission of more than line from the hydrogen. We have the H-alpha line, that is red, 
the H beta line that is bluish, and the, the H gamma line that is very low, that is uh, dark blue, uh, near violet. So how works the narrowband filters? I refer to the two slides, okay. We have, uh, this is the band pass of the filter, we have very narrow windows on the both sides of the line. The line is, uh, let's say, uh, a few angstrom wide. The filter is a few nanometers, usually less than 10. The new high, high contrast the narrow band filters are three nanometers wide. So they select with very high precision only the emitting line that we are interested in. So we have the uh, S2, the H alpha, the O3, and here we have the H beta. This is the typical wavelength of the various lines. The spectra was before. For example, this is the Orion Nebula, where the H alpha emission that is very near to the N2 emission with a normal filter of, uh, let's say, 7 nanometers, they fall both inside. So the H alpha filter is an H alpha plus N2 filter. The O3 filter, that are two lines that both fall inside the normal O3 filter, and the H beta filters. You see that you have no more, much more lines. So, much of the light from the nebula comes from these three lines. So, with these three lines, you can reconstruct the real color of the nebula. Speaking about uh, broadband filters, we have uh, broad windows from a few tens to a few hundreds of nanometers. Which is the problem with this filter? They are okay if you have a continuous emission because they sample all the emission and build the color from the ratios on the various filter. But if you have an arrow, uh, an arrow line, like the H alpha, it falls inside the red, so it is rendered full red. The H beta that is here, it is not full blue, it's greenish, but it falls completely inside the blue filter. So for you, for your filter, the H beta emission is a deep blue. The O3 filter, <coughs> the O3 line, falls both in the blue filter and in the green filter. So the color that you make for that emission depends on the shape of the filter. If your blue filter <coughs> falls steeper, you get less blue on O3. If, the, if it falls down after, it uh, gives you more blue, the same for the green. So rendering in the right color the O3 emission is very hard. So what's my solution? Oh, let's speak about this one, this point that is uh, essential for the processing. With the broadband uh, emission, we have that the intensity of the light on the CCD is uh, proportional to the band pass of the filter. It's, imagine a window that you can open and close uh, and with daylight outside. If you close your window, you uh, make a tighter filter and pass less light. So the wall behind you will be darker. If you open the window, much light enters and the wall is uh, uh, much lighter. The narrow band is different. Is uh, like a laser beam that come inside in your window. So you can open and close. If you close completely, it doesn't pass. But if you open 
a little bit the laser beam pass exactly in the same way of and completely open. So what does it change? The narrow band filters works as a contrast booster. You get less light from continuum emission and also light pollution is a continuum emission. It's not black body, but it's a continuum more, more continuum if you have light uh, with uh, LED uh, uh, with LED, LED lights. So okay, we can use free filters broadband to build the star's color, even with small, with a short, uh, short um, frame, short, short exposures, because the stars has a high uh, signal to noise ratio, and uh, using the narrow band filter to create the colors of the nebula. The colors of the star will be variable, but you can use the, 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 the broadband filters to reconstruct the color of the stars. Which is the problem? The spectral colors. <coughs> the spectral colors is the rendition of a spectral color from a given band, let's say H alpha, in the RGB system, because the spectral color, pure color, falls outside the RGB gamut. So you cannot match exactly the real color of a narrowband line in RGB. This is uh, the main problem of, of uh, this method. But you can try to get the most similar color inside the gamut to match the spectral color with a color that you can see on your uh, display. Here you find the full description. It's very long, so I cannot explain here. And there are also this simple software that, that, you, that you can download from here freely from the internet. Here you put the wavelength. Here I put the, the typical O3 wavelength. And you get the RGB color for that wavelength. This is not a scientifically correct because you cannot do it for this reason, but is the most similar to the real color. <clears throat> so, what I get? For S2, N2, and H alpha, unfortunately, I have full red. 25500. Full red for all these wavelengths. They are really one near each other, so it's correct that all are red. The O3, the line at 500 nanometers, is more green than blue. I always see O3 rendered, not always, no, but many times I see the O3 emission rendered in deep blue. This is wrong, because it's greenish. The second line of O3 is a little bit bluer, but not so much. It's still more green than blue. The H beta emission is more blue than green, and it is not full blue as in the broadband filters. If you take a picture of a nebula, in your blue filter falls the H beta line and you get the H beta as blue in your broadband filters. So, which is the workflow? This workflow can be used also with other software. I do it with PixInsight because for me PixInsight is the best solution. It's easy to do with PixInsight but you can do it with all the software. So, we start with linear, registered, red and corrected master lights. 
So we have done all the pre-processing before. We have the three master sets. And we choose one of the narrow band uh, master as a reference. We have to normalize all the images to that reference. What I mean for normalize? We have two kinds of normalization. Before, I have to do a negative normalization <coughs> to make uh, the background sky at the same level. With a narrow band filter, filter, you have less light pollution, but you have no, you have no light pollution. You have uh, less, but no zero light mm -hmm. pollution. So, you have to put all your images on the same background. I choose usually H alpha image <coughs> because it's the one with the less light pollution because you don't have light in red or streets and so on. This is the first step to get a neutral background when you add up all the colors. The second step, if I want to replicate the real color of light, is to correct for different exposures, but it's better if you take the same exposure for your lights, but if you have different exposure, it's not a problem. And also, for difference in the quantum efficiency of your CCD. You know that your camera has a different quantum efficiency in blue than in red. For example, mine my big is about 55% in O3 and is about 35% in H alpha. So you have to consider this difference. <clears throat> when you end this part, all with pixel map, you get a normalized <coughs> set of narrow band black and white image. Now you have to colorize with the right color, each single image. I will show you the right inside expression if you do this. So you have the H alpha red, the H, uh, the H beta blue greenish, and the O3 green bluish. And then simply you add up one each other and you get the real color of the nebula. Then, <coughs> with ugly, with really ugly star colors, then you prepare the color calibrated RGB image, linear. And blend the RGB image with the narrow band. This is the important task where we need the the difference between narrow band and broadband because in the broadband image, let's say that we have done all the same exposure. The nebula has the, the same brightness because it's narrow band emission. So in the broadband image and the uh, narrow band image, the nebula is the same with different colors. But the stars are much brighter in the uh, broadband image. So, with the maximum, uh, where I wrote, okay, with maximum operator, you use the maximum operator with the two images, boosting a little bit the narrow band image, and you get the narrow band nebula with a broadband star. It's very, very simple, without masks. It's better if you, if you use a mask, only on the nebula. But in theory, you can use it without the mask, because this is automatic by the maximum operator using the bandwidth of the filters. <coughs> so, let's see a very simple example. This is the colorized versions of the uh, narrow band images of H alpha, O3 and H beta, and simply I put one on each other, one, the H alpha plus the H 
uh, the O3 plus the H beta, and I get this. This is what I call a near true color. That is really similar to that I get with the films many, many years ago. ago. This is an example, the, the, the image is ugly, because uh, I made that in a very bad night. But you see that the color of the O3 is not blue, it's greenish. On, the, on this display it's more green. Here I see a help of blue. So, the processing is very, very simple. Uh, if you want, uh, uh, at the end I will give you my website. Uh, you can download the, the process icons of the inside oh, yeah. with the expressions. Okay. And uh, if I don't have an H beta filter, how many of you have an H beta filter? Five, three, three. Okay, four. Fantastic. Go to Mr. Bader and buy an H bit. <laughs> he will be happy. But we can think of this. H alpha and H beta lines come from the very same gas, the hydrogen. So the general shape, the structure of the nebula in these two filters is more or less the same. I would say exactly the same. So if you don't have, okay, the observed ratio between the H alpha and H beta is more or less called constant. It's a constant called the Palmer decrement. It's set by the conditions of ionization inside the nebula and also by the interstellar reddening, because if you have dust, the dust absorbs better blue than red. So it makes the light redder, and the Palmer decrement goes down. So if you have a clear view on the nebula, the Palmer ratio is higher. You can find for many, uh, its value lays between 0 0.15 to 0 0.33. Typical is 0 0.2. And for many nebulas, uh, mainly planetary nebulas, you can find also uh, literature with the Palmer decrement. So you can know which is the right value. <coughs> so from the H alpha image, I can create a synthetic H beta image. It's very simple, with a simple expression, expression of a fixed uh, amount. No bother. Eh? No bother. No, no, no. <laughs> bother is better. So, <laughs> so as we're buying an H beta filter, yeah. yeah because there are differences. This is a, a, an image that I've done on the Ryan Nebula with the same data that I've used to produce the real color image. I've calculated the Palmer decrement. It's not really the Palmer decrement. This is the normalized ratio between H alpha and H beta. Where, where you see red, it means that, that the H alpha line is stronger and uh, where you see blue is uh, stronger than H, relatively, the H beta. So there are differences. And you see that this redder where you have much more dust, because the dust in the nebula produces reddening. The dust is not uniform, but is disposed in, sp in, in the space. So you have red here, red here, bluer so here, bluer here. Here, bluer here. here. So it makes difference. It does okay. only on the blue, but in on air. No, no, no. Only in the sky between. In, sorry, in the space between us and the nebula. 
not the dust in the atmosphere, yes. because the, the dust in the atmosphere, it reddens, but the nebula is small respect to the, to the sky. So the reddening effect uh, is the same on the whole nebula. Mm -hmm. This is the dust uh, in the space between us and the yes. Orion nebula. And it's very interesting. And you can do strange images with, uh, for example, I've made a Hubble palette, similar Hubble palette, with uh, H beta in blue, uh, H alpha in green, and uh, near infrared in uh, red. It's uh, very strange, something uh, psychedelic, <laughs> but it's really interesting. <laughs> So, which is our main tool? Our main tool is uh, pixel map. This is the expression for colorization. I will give you after. Uh, now I will begin to use uh, uh, pixel side to show you directly how to perform this operation. But at the end of the presentation, we have uh, I put all the workflow with all the expression that you will see directly. So don't lose time to write the expression I will, I will give you. This is my website. It is uh, mainly in Italian, sorry, because there, there is a lot of references in English, but uh, not so much in Italian, so I write in Italian. But a few tutorials are in Italian. And in the download area, you will find uh, the, the main uh, icons that I will use uh, today, so you can download it. Okay. Don't consider the images that are very bad, consider only the workflow. So I have my RGB image with a typical blue emission of O3 and I have my H beta that is terrible, H alpha that is a little bit better and O3. This is our typical image. You should specify where you take these images from and which oh, telescope. Hey. I live near uh, Brescia in Italy, it is near Verona in northern Italy, it is one of the most light polluted sky in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I typically have uh, uh, 18 uh, uh, magnitude per arc seconds, typically. When the sky is awful, is uh, 1850 or one time I saw 19. So this is my typical sky. So now we have to start with the normalization. I've created an icon that does both the normalization in one time. You have dollar T, you, that is the target image. You take out the offset, that is the sky level of this image. Then you divide it for the quantum efficiency of the target image and multiply for the quantum efficiency of the target image. So you get the normalization for the 
uh, quantum efficiency difference. Then you divide for the time and multiply for the time of the target image and reference image. So you balance the difference in time. And then at the, at the very end, you add up the offset of the first image. So at the end, you, have, we, you will have the image with the same sky level of the reference image. You can write this expression better if you use some previews on your images. I've created, uh, for example, to normalize each beta image, <laughs> this expression. I create a small preview on the background and I make an, an image, a new image from that preview and I measure the mean background with the median operator, with the median, for, uh, the, the median uh, function. So I read the offset directly from the image. I don't have to use uh, statistics also and uh, write a number with a lot of digits <laughs> because these are linear images. So the sky background is very low and you, li and you need a lot of digits to measure in, in the right way. So, which is the workflow? It's very, very simple. Let's close this icon that is for H beta. You see that in H beta, the reference QE, that is H alpha, is 35%. The quantum efficiency of the H beta is 55%. So I take a small preview on the H beta, and I create the background. I do the same on the H alpha, that is my reference. see them with the same stretching. You see that here is really darker than this one, it was made in different light, in different conditions, and different exposure time. I take the normalized its beta with the right parameters, so I read the background from here, the reference background to the G. The reference background from here, and I apply to this image. It's awful compared to it, but you have normalized the same. The same, I do it for O3. It's, it's not the same in the process, uh, it's linear fit. It's not the same? No, 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 it's not the same because if you use linear fit, you linear fit the images. So you make the H beta exactly, more or less exactly as the H alpha. This is not our goal. I want to keep the difference yes. because uh, you have a different flux from H beta, a uh, flux of photons from the H beta uh, compared to the H alpha. You cannot use linear it is really, really wrong. Okay, let's do the same with the H beta. So I close the background of the H beta and the three. Let's use the same stretching so we see the change. And I think that normalize all three images. You see that now we have uh, the same background and we have 
changed the intensity of the nebula according to the quantum efficiency. Now we have to align the images. It's better if you do the alignment before. But we do it now and we align the images to the RGB. So, because these were different lights, different places, different uh, camera range. I have no uh, an observatory. I mount my telescope every night and I dismount in the month, in the morning. It's a terrible life. <laughs> so I align all my images. H beta O3 H alpha to the reference that is uh, for us the RGB. Ah, yes, I forgot the previews. Okay, if you have previews or you delayed it because uh, it's inside by default, uh, looks for stars only in the previews. Our previews are on the background, you have no stars. Okay. Now we have a nine images and you can put together to get the real color nebula. I colorize the H alpha with the colorized H alpha background process. So I delete these images. I take a small patch of sky here and I call it background I take the colorized H alpha that is the same expression before but I don't have offset here but I read directly the median of the background for because I before I take out the background, I colorize only the nebula and the stars, and I add the background back to get a neutral background with the numbers of H alpha, 25500. Ah, okay, remember, two. This is important because without it's a mess, to create a new image with the RGB color space. Because if you do forgetting to use the right color space, you get the same image in black and white. And you get crazy. Why? <laughs> so remember to put the RGB color space and you get the color nebula. Now I do the same with oh I closed the I want to use it after pocket. Let's do with H beta. I don't create a new background because the background is the same. I have done the normalization before. So I can use the background from the H alpha image. <coughs> it's not a problem. Okay, colorize H beta is the same expression, different name, different RGB, different color. This is the H beta image. And the same with the four three.
that is greenish. Bam. And put together. Colorized H alpha plus colorized H beta plus colorized O3. If you want, uh, if you have a S2 filter, you can add S2 in red color. <coughs> it don't changes the colors, but it changes the structure of the nebula. <coughs> Divided by three, because I I don't want to have a clipping of data. If you add up more images. In the bright part, you can go up more than one, so I divide by three. So why don't you simply use the root scale result? Sorry? Why don't you simply use the root scale result? Uh, because I don't want to change this too much, but it's correct. If you want, you can use a uh, root scale. But sometimes you can... It, it's more or less the same, yes. With one difference that I will show you later. Uh, I want to use uh, the H alpha and O3 image as a, a luminance, but at linear stage. For using at linear stage uh, as intensity, you have uh, to you, you need to have the same uh, brightness. I usually use also linear feed, but I prefer divide for a known factor than leaving to rescale with an unknown. I prefer to get more, more control on the on the process, but it's it's okay. One question on your folder that you have there. Sorry. On your folder that you have there, you divide by three afterwards. Why not the individual? Because it's the same. It's the same. It's exactly the same. Yes, it's exactly the same. Remember the brackets. One of the colorized images, which you want, is the same, and you get the color nebula. Very, very simple. It's a matter of a few minutes if you don't speak while doing it, and if you don't try to explain. So it's very simple. Here, the images are terrible, so you have a lot of noise, uh, a lot of gradients and so on. The sky was awful. But you can do it better. I've closed the, the align H alpha. I'll align it again for one moment. Since the O3 is terrible, uh, sorry, the X beta is terrible, I want to create a luminance with H alpha, that is the main structure in hydrogen, and uh, uh, O3, that has a very different structure in this name. This is very easy to do with the uh, map. <coughs> I take the H alpha register plus the H beta, uh, sorry, the O3 register, and I divide by 2. Or normalize. <coughs> I create a new image that I call. Uh, 
if you have uh, good data also in uh, H beta or H2, you can add all together, you get a very better sky because you have less noise on the sky and you keep the structure of the nebula. So if, you, if your data are good, add up, you get a better luminous image, synthetic luminous image. Usually, LRGB uh, composition is made uh, at non-linear stage. Here we can do in linear stage. Take your narrow band image and uh, in channel management you can extract the intensity channel. Then, just to have the same luminosity range, use linear fit. Using the real intensity image as a reference, too many images, and apply to the synthetic, synthetic image. Then, ten minutes. You put it together with the channel combination. You select the synthetic luminance and you will see that it is much better. It's much better because you up up all the signal and you put down the noise. The final step is to put together with the RGB image. So I have the final process that is merge narrow band RGB Okay, all these icons can be downloaded by my site. <coughs> that is simply a maximum between the M27 RGB and the narrowband RGB without the sky level. I compare only the fluxes from the astronomical object, not, not the fluxes from the sky. And I have a booster for the RGB. So I boost the, sorry for the RGB, for the narrow band. So I boost the narrow band signal to be higher than the narrow band <laughs> signal in the RGB image, but without changing the stars. The only thing that I have to do is this is the RGB. I take the sky in a place more or less without stars, and this is the background RGB. Then I do the same with the narrow band. Just not to lose time and 
rain mask on the nebula, not only because uh, my data are not good, so if I don't use a mask to work only on the nebula, I get an awful noise on the sky background. So I use a mask. This is a simple rage mask, smooth, no more. I apply it. to my image, you can see the mask, protect the sky and let me work on the nebula. And I create a preview on the nebula just to trim the data, the, the, the parameters. Let's start with boost 2, you will see that it is not enough because you barely see changing here. But if you boost more, okay, you get the right colors on the nebula without changing the stars. Because the stars on the narrow band, if you work at linear stage, are much dimmer thanks to the narrow band filters. Mm -hmm. So the maximum, they, they are always uh, under the gross band stars. You can boost the, the narrow band up to your data quality and up to the ratio between the broad band and narrow band. If you, but if you, if you boost uh, too much, uh, the narrow band stars will become higher than the broad band, and so you lose the effect. But you can boost up to, for me, my data, up to five without problems. When you are happy of the result, you apply to your units. difference is really huge. Remember that you can take short images, only to take the stars without saturation, so you get better broadband stars with much color and so on. And then take the nebula only from narrow band you put together. When you have to take pictures from a very light polluted sky, in broadband you cannot work, you, you can do three minutes of exposure, four minutes, then you, you are saturated. And so you have to, uh, to, to make short exposure to get the stars. And then uh, with a narrow band, uh, you put down the light pollution and you get the uh, nebula. Very simple, very very simple, very straightforward. How many minutes? Six minutes. I show you how to create the, the um, synthetic uh, H beta. I will show you with uh, the Orion nebula. Let's close all. <coughs> a real H data image of M42 but I am not using it. These images are uh, already normalized. So I have already done registration and uh, normalization. I have I have only to create the synthetic H beta. So I start from H alpha. I 
As always, I want to work only on the astronomical data, not on the sky. So I create the background. And I have to create synthetic image data. image, that will be the H alpha image. I take away the background, so I work only on the nebula without the sky. I multiply by a factor, that is the Baldwin decrement. Then I adapt again the same sky level before. <coughs> so I have again normalized images. Okay, very simple. In my case, I can use uh, 0 0.15. For Orion Nebula, the typical ratio is uh, 0.2, so I change uh, this value to 0.2, and I apply to the H alpha image. I create a new H beta channel in black and white as target, so it's black and white. So I have my H beta image, and now I do the same as before. I have the background that is the same because they are already normalized, and I colorize H alpha. H beta. Four three. Okay, the time is over. Thank you all. And uh, if you have a question, I'm here in these two days. <laughs>